In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take advantage of in-browser editing to allow your clients to make minor changes directly in a web browser. We're going to begin in the Adobe Muse application. What I've just done is taken my FTP credentials and I've uploaded my design to my hosting platform. Now, if I switch over to a web browser, I can see that the site is live. It has the domain that I've purchased and it's hosted on that hosting platform. Once I'm done with my design work, if minor edits need to be made, it's much easier for me to have the client or the owner of the website make those changes directly in the browser. Now, in order to enable that, I'll make sure that the site owner has the FTP details, the username and password, to log into the site. The next thing I'll want to do is open up a new tab in the browser, and I'm going to type in inbrowserediting.adobe.com and hit enter. This brings me to the in-browser editing login page. I'll come in and enter the name of my site. I'll hit next, and then I'm gonna enter my username and password. And then click edit site. Now in browser editing has loaded up the site for me on that landing page. You'll notice it looks just like the live site, but it has this control bar here at the top. Now to the leftmost point, I can come in and look at some help documents or FAQs. As I continue across this bar, I see the page that I'm currently on. I'm on that home page. There's a drop down for multiple breakpoints. If the designer of the website is using the responsive features, I can have different breakpoints or different layouts for different devices. And I can jump between each of those breakpoints. If I make a change, I'm going to want to make sure it looks good across all of the breakpoints. And this is where I select that. And then to the right, I have the ability to undo any change I make or publish live to the internet. So let's go in and start making some changes. As I roll down on the site and roll over areas, I can see that they're editable with a very fine little dotted line here. So I'm going to click into the text here. Instead of sweet, I'm going to call this the incredible new scooter, kick it like a city bird. So I've made that change to the text. Notice that it's in context. I still am looking at the text in the browser. I'm going to roll on down here, and I'd like to change one of these cube images. So I'll click on that image, and then click on Edit Image. I can access any of the images that the site designer might have uploaded as part of the Muse design, or I'm free to go ahead and select something I might have on my own machine. I'm going to click Upload Photo and go to my own machine and grab a cube that I have locally here. I'll go ahead and click Open. And in-browser editing is going to go ahead and upload that image to the hosting platform so I can access it. I see it here on that right-hand side now. So I can just go ahead and click that checkbox, which is going to apply the image to the tile that I'm editing. I can continue down on the page, and I see what is Pigeon. It's a colorful, lightweight kick scooter, like its namesake. I want to go ahead and add a hyperlink here that will link to the definition of what a pigeon is. So I'm going to click on the text that I want to apply that link to and click on Add Link. And in a dialog here, I can come in and link to an external page. I've got the dictionary definition of a pigeon on my clipboard here. So I'll just paste that into place. I want it to open in a new window. That will make sure it doesn't take people out of my site, just allows them to see the definition on a separate page. You'll notice I can link to other things like pages that exist on the site, a phone number, or a link to actually download a file that I can include with my site in this window. I'll click OK. Now any of the changes that I've made, I'm going to want to make sure that they applied across all of my breakpoints. So maybe coming back here to the top, I'll go to the drop down, and I'm going to check on the 900 pixel example. And I see there's the word incredible. That looks good. And I'll go ahead and check also on the 480 layout, and there's the words incredible. So the changes look good across each of those breakpoints. Now I can continue to navigate within the site. If I want to jump to another page, I can do that by clicking on it in the navigation. Notice I have the ability to click to either change a link where that link goes, or just navigate to another page by clicking on About. 
Now, it is going to warn me that if I switch from this page to another one, I'm going to lose the changes I've made. So rather than do that, I'm going to make sure to publish the changes. This is going to push all of them live on the live website. So I'll click on publish and I get a little alert there on the right that's letting me know that all of the changes I've made to that page are now live and it takes me to the next page, the about page, where I can continue to make changes. Now as the site owner, I don't need to worry about making a lot of changes that will be lost when the site designer goes into Muse to make changes again. There's a method by which that designer can match all of the changes on the live website into the Muse application. Let's go ahead now and see how the web designer would go about applying the changes that have been made in the browser back to the Muse source file. So I'll switch back over to the Muse application and I want to pull down on file to sync with web version. Muse is going to now reach out to the live website and do what's known as a diff or look for differences between the local instance and what's live out there on the web. I'm then presented with this review and merge changes interface. I can drag it off to the side and I see that in the web browser there was a change made from the word sweet to the word incredible. I can actually look at that in the site design by clicking on the preview on page checkbox. There's the new word and the old word so I know exactly the change that I'm making. From there I can select to merge it into the Muse document and step to the next change. I see that there's an image change here. Once again I can preview the new image and the one that was there before, choose to merge it into Muse or not. And I would continue as I go through the entire site and all of the changes. Once I'm finished I could save that as my latest Muse file and then go forward with any changes as a web designer I want to make in the Muse application. Now in this tutorial we've just lightly touched on some of the capabilities you can give to the site owner to offload your work and allow them to control content on their site. I encourage you to give this new feature a try.